Hi, I'm Simone. And I'm Ben. And this is our mate George the farmer. And today we're learning about a different type of farming, tree farming. And just like regular farming or cropping, tree farming involves planting seeds and awesome machinery like harvesters. But instead of eating the food, the timber grown is turned into a range of different products like house frames, fences, furniture, toilet paper and tissues. Jeez, George, are you okay? Crikey. Now, George, did you ever wonder how huge Pinus radiata pine like this is turned into houses? <laughs> well, come with us and find out from the ground up. We're at a baby tree farm, also called a nursery, in Glencoe in an area of southeastern Australia known as the Green Triangle, largely because it's so green. Craig is in charge of the nursery and helps to grow millions of Pinus radiata seedlings each season. We grow this variety because they are very well suited to local growing conditions and they provide good timber for our sawmills. The seeds take approximately three to four weeks to germinate and this year we've grown 11 and a half million trees. Each of these seedlings spend approximately nine months growing in the nursery before they're ready to be planted in the forest. At the planting site, a spade is used to dig each hole. The seedlings need to go into the ground nice and straight and the planters use their feet to pack the soil tight. Another few steps and the process starts again. Courtney is one of the foresters. She says some workers plant as many as 3,000 trees in a single day and can walk up to 10 kilometres. Courtney, how many trees in total will be planted across this site? The total area of this site is 80 hectares and we're aiming to plant 1,333 trees to the hectare, which means that there's almost 106,000 trees being planted into this site alone. Across the Green Triangle region, we plant over 20 million trees every season and sometimes even more. So are you planting trees all year round, Courtney? No, so we're not able to plant trees all year round because we have to make sure that we get rainfall to water the trees for us. This means that we have to plant in our wet season, which is the months of June and July. So it means that we actually only have a really short window of eight weeks or 10 weeks to get the trees all into the ground. Wow, you must be busy. It's a very busy time. The trees help the environment by taking in carbon dioxide from the air and releasing oxygen for us to breathe. By the time they're ready to harvest, they have grown up to 35 metres tall and their diameter, which is the thickness of the trunk, can be up to 45 centimetres. You know, Simone and George, there's one thing that I've always wanted to say in a forest, and that's timber! And clear, everyone! The harvester cuts the logs into a certain length and then stacks them into piles ready for the forwarder to collect. The forwarder takes all of the logs to a landing and then the loader loads them onto haulage trucks so that they can be taken to the mill and sawn into planks. Lord, don't you know that trees are good for the world? Lord, don't you know that wood is good for the world? Forests take the carbon out of the air It's great for us and the world that we share Oh yeah! Word is a fun one to say yeah. Carbon sequestration saving the day Lord, don't you know that trees are good for the world? Lord, don't you know that wood is good for the world? You know, Simone and George, you can't get a square peg in a round hole. What I'm trying to understand is how do we get a round log and turn them into rectangular planks? I think we need to follow that log truck to find out. Paul is in charge of this Mount Gambia mill and he can tell Ben exactly how to turn a round log into a rectangular plank. First thing we do is we bring the log into the mill and we'll take the bark off it and the bark will end up in a pot plant that you'll see at a nursery. Then we'll feed the logs into the sawmill where we'll scan them and we'll use bandsaws to cut them up into long planks. 
From there, we'll stack the timber, we'll take it to our kilns and we dry it to get the moisture out like a big oven. And then finally to our dry mill where we'll dress the timber into a nice smooth product ready for the construction industry to build a house from. Well, wow, Paul, that sounds like a pretty big job. How many people work here at the sawmill? We've got 300 employees that work at the sawmill. Every job from an environmental engineer to our maintenance and support staff. We basically process enough timber, which is 80 semi-trailer loads of timber every day. And with the timber that's dressed out the back of the mill, four homes every 60 minutes leave our site. And here is the timber out on the building site getting transformed into a house. Well, don't you know the trees are good for the world? Yeah. Well, don't you know that wood is good for the world? Well, don't you know that trees are good for the world? Yeah. Well, don't you know that wood is good for the world? Oh. Well, don't you know that trees are good for the world? Yeah. Well, don't you know that wood is good for the world? Yeah. Wow, what a journey! From a tiny seedling to these huge trees to the sustainable products that we use every day. Thanks for joining us on our tree farming tour. Catch you later.